So there's a question from Prathamesh. It's easily answered. Did you note the question? The question is, when your person dies, um, so the body and mind, are, they're dead, they're gone. So when we say somebody's reborn, multiple lives, what carries over the individuality, memories and things like that? Maybe tendencies or vasanas or impressions. But the answer is in the question itself. Have you noticed? It's only some of you are nodding. <laughs> It's not that the mind dies. The Vedantic idea of the human personality, of our, our personality, is trichotomous. Body, here, the physical body, what you can see and touch, this one. And then what's called the subtle body, sukshma sharira. When you look in, there's nothing mysterious about it. When you look inwards, you see, you feel thoughts, emotions, ideas, memories, desires, a person, a personality. That's the subtle body. In Vedanta, there are this uh, classification, there are 19 parts of the subtle body and so on. That need not concern us now. But the point here is that subtle body does not die when the physical body dies. That's the understanding in Vedanta. In fact, in a general sense, that's the understanding in every religion. The idea of an afterlife is common to every religion. Tell me one religion where it's not, not there. You cannot have a religion without afterlife. So this subtle body it continues after the death of the physical body. If you ask me what is the proof, I'll ask you what is the proof that it does not continue? <laughs> Notice, what is death? Clearly death is the death of the physical body. But when you mean a person, a living person, yourself, or the person sitting next to you, what you clearly mean is that body and what's going on in that body, the, the person in that body. Look at the trap we fall into. When the person dies, we say, it's gone. But only the body is dead. How do you know that the person inside, that, that subtle being inside is dead? How do you know? No, really, how do you know? You just see the death of the physical body. No, he's not talking. Obviously not talking. The body is dead. How can the person talk? Hmm. There are many experiences which show to us that the subtle body and the physical body are not exactly the same. One person told me about, I've heard of this, remaining conscious under anesthesia. General anesthesia, remaining conscious. I met a person actually who has had that experience. And she was saying that in an operation, she was being operated upon, and yet she's completely aware. Um, not a nice thing, <laughs> terrifying thing. But she could not talk, she could not move her hands. Um, medical science has records, but I, for the first time I met somebody who has had that experience. <laughs> Which means, when the physical body is immobilized, you can still have a fully functional internal person. And you don't have to go to such rare uh, examples. Just our example of dreaming, where we have a rich internal life, a dream life, without any reference to our physical body. The physical body is asleep on your bed, and nice, safe and sound, and maybe we are running for your life from uh, a lion on the Serengeti or something. So you're seeing the, uh, the you can see you're seeing the grasslands and the lion chasing you and you're running for your life. Everything is there and yet there is no idea of the, your own physical body which is sleeping on the bed. So you, at least in principle, in our own inner experience, we can experience our own life going on without any reference to this physical body. So anyway, the idea is that the subtle body goes on after death and that goes on to other worlds guided by its own karma, comes back to this world in a, with a new body and a new life. So that subtle body continues with the memories and especially the samskaras, the tendencies. Memories, the yogis say the memories are there but memories are not easily accessible. Even in this life, memories of ourselves as babies, not accessible to us. Not so easily accessible. So, But tendencies are there. So those continue from life to life, and they are carried by the subtle body. As Prathamesh says, Brahman is nishkriya, inactive, inactive in the sense of being the witness consciousness. Just as we saw just now, I am that vast space of, a luminous space of awareness, in which all the sensations of this person, uh, it arises and disappears. I am that unchanging awareness. In that awareness, the subtle body and the physical body, they come and go, they manifest, they act. So this is how it happens. The crucial point for Prathamish to understand is, at death only the physical body dies. 
the subtle body, which is Atman plus the mind and other things, that is Atman plus the subtle body, Jivatma, that continues. Atman or Brahman in itself does not come or go anywhere, it just is. And what goes and comes is the subtle body. Physical body moves around here, you're coming from a home to Vedanta society. The subtle body moves with the physical body and after the physical body is gone, it moves on to other planes of existence. So this is the general idea.